Welcome back to another episode of In the Doghouse, a podcast hosted by Underdogs Athletics featuring Justin Kotler, myself, Kiefer Lammy, and now with a new mic after Christmas, Santa was good to you, Dakota Shackleton, joining us for the second time. What's up, guys? New mic, but he definitely does not have a new camera. <laughs> I actually True. am on a new camera. I'm on my brand new <laughs> iMac. No he doesn't, chance. He doesn't need a new camera. He needs a new backdrop. He needs a new home. So... <laughs> If any of our listeners out there are from Las Vegas, renting out a room, potentially one with like a, I don't know, like a new paint job in the back, some some shades from the 2000s or later. Oh I did the thing where you shove all your laundry in the closet real quick when someone comes over so it looks like it's nice. Nice. Yeah. My, uh, my desk area is our spare bedroom, and so I got like an L-shaped desk. It's pinned against the wall so that... I have this whole half, and to you guys, you just see like this backdrop, but I look wow. ahead, and there's like a bed, there's a bunch of shit in the corner, there's another desk that I haven't sold yet, so it's it's all about uh, what the people see. Ash well, painted our, our back wall, I don't know if you can see, can you see it. Well, I figured that you weren't, you didn't do that yourself. Yeah. That, that matches the new garage gym, right? Ash and Ivy, yes, and then we're going to get some things to put on it, so it's actually going to be relatively nice now, so that'll be fun. Well, next time I'll just come and use your spare desk, Kiefer. We'll just go, you know, face to face, but it'll seem like we're in different rooms. No, we should go butt to butt. You can be right here behind me. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so as we're recording this right now, it's just about January 1st. So we figured that, you know, this would be a really good time for us to dive in and talk a little bit about tips for people going into 2023. And Obviously, like this is the stereotypical time of the year where everybody sort of reflects on the year. They show everything that happened in 2022. They start to make their resolutions and stuff. So as it relates to us, it's just kind of talking about, um, you know, some ideas or some things for people to keep in mind as they go into this next year of training. Uh, I know for me personally, when I was thinking about this, I was using, you know, some of the athletes that I work with as anecdotes for this. So, you know, if any of you are listening and you hear something that pops up that sounds like it should be for you, then it probably is. Yeah, I uh, I have some have some fun fun tips to go over with people. First being, make sure you sign up for an Underdogs RX or Elite or Everyday Underdogs template. That's the just, biggest tip I can give you. Straight <laughs> straight into the plug. Let's do it. That's it. That's the, <laughs> that's that's the whole episode. Nobody nobody go. needs anything else. You yeah. want to improve your performance in the open? We got gotcha. you. Semis, quarters, everything. Come on, we got gotcha. you. Yeah, I was looking at my list right here. I kind of did like a four P's for 2023. First one, programming. And yeah. who the hell do you follow? <laughs> I like it. There we go. Dakota said it much more properly than I did, but yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, I think that that's the obvious part, right? It's uh, it's almost one of those things that. Everybody knows that you should be following a program. Everybody knows that you should be sticking to a program, but they still need to hear it over and over again because so many people out there are hopping between programs or they follow one, but when something comes up that they don't want to do or it's not something that's in their wheelhouse, they kind of omit it. And so, like, seriously, sticking to the plan, whatever your plan is, is probably the number one key to success that you could take away from this. And I know that that's the, you know, our little mini nugget Instagram post that we put up was kind of like staying the course. And so that was kind of the highlight piece for me. It's like, you know, do we want you doing underdogs? Do we think that's a, big, a great way to be successful? Yes. But even if you're not in the CrossFit space, even if you have a Barry's Bootcamp membership, which I, you know, maybe you shouldn't, you should go somewhere else, but no matter what you do, like stay the course, stick to the plan. If you sign up for a membership, show up every day for that thing, because any exercise plan that you stick to consistently is going to be better than one that you're inconsistent with. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. One of the things that I tell people, whatever workout program, the best workout program is the one that you'll do. The best nutrition program is the one that you'll actually do. And so finding something that you like and that you can stick and lean back to regularly um, is definitely going to be huge. Yeah, and I, and I think you can extrapolate that all the way to the elite level in the sense of, you know, there's no, you, you have to be consistent. There's, there's, you know, the two biggest things that I say to people, uh, you know, when I, when I start with them, you know, as athletes, and it's essentially like our, our two big keys, right? Consistency and health. If we can keep you consistent and we can keep you healthy, we can constantly take steps forward. Even if they're baby steps, 
Because after three months, six months, a year, all those baby steps become huge steps. But the problem is, if there's a lack of consistency, you take a step forward and a step backwards. If you're getting injured or you're not taking care of yourself outside the gym, you're not doing the things that you should be doing nutrition-wise, recovery-wise, you'll take one step forward and three steps backwards. And then it's just this, this constant dance where you're never going anywhere. You just, you know, it's one step forward, one step backwards, or one step forward, two steps backwards. And, and the problem is, is that you can't ever get ahead that way. So when we talk about consistency and we talk about, you know, the biggest tip we can give you, it's get in the gym, do the things that you're supposed to be doing, be consistent, show up day after day, you know, there's going to be days you don't want to do it, and, and those are the days that you're going to get better. And I'm not saying the day that you have 104 fever, right, during the flu, but I'm saying the day you wake up and you're like, fuck, I feel tired, or, you know, I don't feel my best today. That's okay. You can still accomplish things, and it's those days that are going to add up to where you're going to be like, wow, you know, I really was able to, to stay consistent and do these things, and it's going to, it's going to fill you with pride, and, you know, you get a lot accomplished, so... Yeah, yeah and I think that's a good a good starter to everyone is none of the other tips count if you're not consistent. Yeah, and there's things you can plan and there's things you can't plan. So one of the things I had on my list, you know, in terms of planning is is the year, right? You know there's going to be specific holidays, you know there's going to be trips and travel, but more specifically, qualifiers, the open, quarters, competitions that you want to sign up for. Um, and, you know, you got to plan around that. You know, the holidays are, we're in the swing of the holidays, right? I was gone four or five days. Some of our guys got hit with like travel where they got stuck for two or three extra days. You can't always plan for those things. But, uh, you know, whenever I'm going on my vacations, whenever I'm going on my trips, I make sure I tailor my programming a little bit around it. Thanks to Kiefer. Or I make sure I can lean into a uh, local box that I can drop into. So I'm not just stuck for three or four days or deciding, oh, I don't want to go on a trip because I need to prioritize my training. Like you can do both. You just got to plan it. Yeah, you can. And a, a great example of that is is um, back when Carrie was, um, you know, competing regularly was that trips, her trips, um, everything was based around where she was going to train, making sure she could get in her programming, traveling on training, uh, on, on rest days, yeah. all those things. Now, of course, we're talking about, you know, the elite of the elite. But for those of you who are who want to be consistent, for those of you who are competing, you know, especially at a relatively high level, um, you got to take those things into account, right? Like if you have a goal, the decisions that you make, the places you go, the trips you take, all those things, if, if we want to achieve that goal, you've got to take a look at that and you've got to say to yourself, is this helping me achieve what I want to achieve? And it, are all these decisions that I'm making helping me get to where I want to get to? Because if they're not, then you need to take a step back and, and either change your goal or become more committed to making decisions around that. And I think the travel and, and the holidays is the perfect time for that because it's so easy to fall off. It's so easy to, you know, eat things or, or, you know, go places or do things or cut things out, you know, because you've got to be somewhere for a party, et cetera. But you've got to take a, a step back and say to yourself, are these things going to help me get to where I want to get to? Is this the best decision for my goal? Um, because the holidays will come and go, but hopefully your goals won't. Um, so, you know, I think that's, I think that's a big key around this time of the year is to remember that. Well, I, and I think an even bigger part of that is when you are setting goals, taking a step back and, and deciding if these are actually goals that you want and that feel attainable to you, or if they, they're goals that you feel like you're supposed to have, because I feel like that's one of the biggest reasons people fall off in the beginning of the year is they make these goals. Like I'm going to go to the gym six days a week. I'm going to lose 30 pounds. I'm going to do X, Y, Z thing because they think because of their friends or because of society or because of whatever thing that that's what they want, or maybe it is something that they want. But when you like peel deeper and you go to a deeper level and you try to figure out maybe after the fact, like why you weren't successful with that, why you weren't able to commit to those things, why you weren't able to be as disciplined as somebody like Carrie is or something. Most of the time it's because you don't actually want that thing as much as you thought you did. You just felt like you were supposed to say that, you know what right. I mean? Um, yeah. and I, I see that over and over and over again. And like, that's okay. Right? Like we, we could, I have people that I've worked with that say like, I want to go to the CrossFit games. Uh, and I coach them for a couple months and we do the programming and they're mostly adherent 
to the training, but they're not doing the things outside of the gym. They're not sleeping. They're not taking care of their nutrition. Um, maybe they're not digging in on things that way that are that that I would like for them to. They're not investing in the process of like skill acquisition, all this stuff. They just want hard workouts, and you spend three to six months treating them as if you know we're preparing for the games, and we have kind of a meeting. We talk about this, and it's like, yeah, I, I guess I just don't want that thing that much. You think that you do until you realize what it takes to get to that point, right? Like you think that you want to lose 50 pounds until you realize what it takes in terms of changing your habits and changing your lifestyle. And so I think being really, really honest with yourself about what you want and what's actually realistic for you um, can be super helpful. And I think that ties into, you know, one of the tips that we can give for, you know, the next year is, is realistic goal setting. Um, you know, I, I always think it's important, you know, in, in whatever you're doing, but especially in the fitness realm, um, to, to set goals, right? And myself, for instance, very different than when I was, you know, competing in basketball or golf or ultimately CrossFit, um, you know, but now what I love to do is I love to rock climb. So for me, like I'm, I've set goals for myself coming into this year saying, okay, I, I, I have never sent a, a five twelve. like people who rock climb will know what that is. Like I've sent several five elevens, but I've never sent a five twelve. So my goal for this year is to be able to do that. Um, and you know, uh, for, for a person who's a recreational climber, I only climb twice a week. It's, it's not that easy, you know, but my twice a week is, is really, really consistent. Um, and it's something that I love to do. And I know for me that it's attainable as long as I stay consistent and I'm going to start doing some things outside the gym. I'm actually going to try to drop a little bit of body weight to help that. I'm, you know, right now right around like 190, 192 pounds. I would definitely help my cause to drop 10 pounds. It, it's going to help me. Um, you know, and, and, uh, so those are certain things and, and, and that's a realistic goal. What would not be a re realistic goal is for me to say that I'd like to send a 514 or climb, you know, a V8, something along those lines. That's not going to happen this year, maybe down the line, but certainly not this year. So I think it's important, you know, when we go into the season, you know, say you were a borderline semifinals athlete last year, right? Like say you finished either just outside of semis or maybe just in semis, you went to semifinals, you know, you finished uh, in the twenties, right? And this, this year, your goal is realistically, I'd like to, to make it top 20 at a, at a semifinal, or in this case, when we look at the semifinal setup, especially in, in North America, that might mean top 30 or top 40, right? Um, but, but to come into the season and say, I'd like to finish top 10 at the games might not be the most realistic when we're looking at goal setting. So I think goal setting is amazing, but I also think it's super important to be realistic, uh, to pick something that's a challenge, but something that is possibly attainable, not something that's just completely out of the realm of possibility. And, and so that feeds right into one of my things that I had listed here, which was essentially like stop measuring your success in terms of PRs or daily workout scores or leaderboards, right? I'm fine with people having like hairy audacious goals. I'm fine with somebody that's like never made it to semifinal saying I want to win the CrossFit games or make the CrossFit games, but I'm not fine with them stopping there. So the idea is like, all right, if you want this goal, if you just go into the gym every day saying that's the goal, then all you're going to do is just hammer yourself and, and hit workouts as hard as you can without like any idea of what your focus is on the micro scale right and so rather than setting like measuring your success and where you fall on the worldwide leaderboard what your prs are what your workout score was if you beat the person you're training with today be more invested in the process of being like i'm showing up i'm getting better at this skill i'm uh executing a game plan for this workout i'm giving the best effort that i can things that are yes they're harder to measure but they keep you much more neutral throughout your whole training process. Because if you're measuring success on whether or not you beat your training partners in training each day, then you're constantly riding this emotional roller coaster of like, I'm great. I'm terrible. I'm great. I'm terrible. And, but without like, but without any idea of like what you're actually improving along the way, because if you want to, you want to climb a, a five eleven, right? And five twelve, five twelve, five twelve. Yeah. I can barely do a five nine. We've decided after today, uh, <laughs> but like, that's awesome. And you could go about that a couple different ways. You could go in every day and just try to cl climb, climb a 512 and get really sore and pissed off and fall every single time. Or you could commit to the process of showing up twice a week of 
<laughs> improving your body composition so that you're a little bit lighter of getting more grip strength of doing a whole bunch of five tens and five elevens of practicing mm -hmm. different holds. And so your process is that I'm trying to get better at these skills and these different components of this thing so that I can reach that outcome goal. It's not just, I want to climb a five twelve, So I'm getting on a five twelve every single day. Right. So I think it, it's, it's setting those goals, but like you said, it's micro and macro. Right. Yeah. It's like your 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 end goal, but there are these these little wins that you have along the way. And and being cognizant of that and also I think it's important like along the way like rewarding yourself for those things. Like, you know, patting yourself on the back for those small victories, I think are really, really important because I think it's really easy to just beat yourself up all the time. And if you continuously beat yourself up, inevitably people get burnt out and they, you know, they don't, then that's when the consistency falls off because it's just like, fuck, you know, it's, I'm getting burnt out. I'm not enjoying myself anymore. So I, I think that there's, you know, there's a lot of things along the way to, to continuously pick yourself up and, and remind yourself why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah. And it's and, like, yeah. Go for it. Yeah, and I love that because it kind of reminds me about the beginning of when I started CrossFit, right? It doesn't matter if you're a beginner or at the elite level. There are still those little breadcrumbs and those little challenges along the way. And, uh, you know, whether it is, you know, going through the progressions of the new skills or just adding a little bit of the weight or just making sure that, like, right now, since I haven't been as consistent, you know, you're hitting, you know, all those checkboxes, right? Hitting the certain amount of programming every single day or just showing up to the gym every single day. Like, you can have daily wins. It's okay to have, you know, training wins, you know, just for today and tomorrow, um, as well as wanting to win the CrossFit Games. You know, you can have both of those. I always liked, uh, ha yeah, like you said, the macro and the micro, right? Yeah. And we see it even at, like, an elite level. People who measure their success every single day in the gym by how a workout goes or by how a lift goes. If they come into the gym and they're supposed to hit cleans it cleaner jerks at 80 to 90 percent and they can hit 80 but they can't get to 90 like that's a fail for the day and you can see it on their right. face you can see it in their emotions if you go into a gym and it's a workout that you think is they think is a wheelhouse for them and somebody beats them you can see it on their face and, and like who cares who wins those things what you know if they show up consistently if they follow the program the goal is that you're ready to go when it's time to compete and it's time for that and what happens on day-to-day -day basis doesn't matter because you're not training in this vacuum where that training day is the only thing affecting you. You had however many training days leading up to it, whatever you did that morning, if you already had a, a, a piece beforehand, what stresses you have going on in life, what you're doing with your nutrition, like your, your journey is so individual for you to get so stressed out about what other people are doing, takes the enjoyment out of the process and is way more likely to lead you to falling off from whatever your goal was. than if you can just kind of stay the course, be happy about what you're doing, be happy about showing up, be happy if other people are doing well too and you just ride your own wave. And that leads into one of my next tips, which is uh, trying to leave each session um, being a little bit more analytical and being a little less emotional about the session and, and taking one thing that you did well or that you're proud of yourself with and then taking one thing that's more of a constructive criticism um, or, you know, and I hate the word criticism, but, but something that's constructive that, that you can do better. Um, and, and trying to do that every single day. Um, it doesn't have to be five things, right? It can literally be one thing and one thing, one positive and one thing you can improve on. Um, and I think that, that doing that, um, it, for one, uh, it, it, on the, on the one side, on the positive side, it's, it rewards us for, for doing something that we're proud of ourselves. And on the other side, it's us taking an analytical approach and an analytical look at our training and saying, okay, you know what? Like this didn't go as well as I thought, or I could have done this. And, and you know, I'm going to work on that to improve. And then that way I'm going to get better. Right. Uh, as opposed to like, fuck, I suck. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. The reps didn't go the way I wanted them to, blah, blah, blah. Trying to take the emotion out of it um, and, and be much more analytical uh, because those emotional highs and lows, as Kiefer said, are a killer. And, you know, I always go back to, you know, like I said, in, in the past, I've, I've talked about how it used to amaze me in sessions um, with Carrie back in the day when, when, you know, I would give her a workout and it would just 
just brutalize her, right? Like, and especially I'd give her a workout. It was like four weaknesses back to back to back. And it was like 40 minutes of it. And, you know, there was one that I can remember brought her to tears in the middle of the workout. But when the workout was over, she was basically like, you know, I got so much better doing this today. I, I was able to, you know, do my dumbbell box step, step overs better than I've ever done them before. I was able to, you know, handle that sandbag better. This I'd love to be able to do better next time, but I will because I'm showing up and I'm doing what I need to. But whether she did unbelievably well or whether she struggled in a workout, she was able to take, you know, what was good and what she could improve on, stay very emotionally even keel and, and improve upon it. And, and it was, it was something that I always talk to young athletes about, like, you know, that that's, that's what you want to emulate. Like that's mm -hmm. what you want to try to do because if you want to have a long career, those emotional highs and lows can kill you. And that's not to say to never get pumped up and coming from me, obviously, <laughs> right? Like you seem, I'm a crazy person in competitions, but as an athlete trying to stay more even keel. Um, but yeah, one of the tips, like I said, is I, I think it's important from each one of your sessions, try to pull something that you reward yourself for, and then try to pull something that you can learn from that maybe didn't go as well as you think that you're going to try to work on. I've never understood from an athlete standpoint, like not being okay with a workout being hard. And maybe this is just because of the sport I came from or from the fact that I was a walk-on and I was literally like end of the bench on my team in college, right? But like to me, going out and having people that are better than me gives me something to learn from, something to chase and like something to motivate me. And if I'm constantly winning stuff, then like, yeah, it feels good to win a workout. But if you're going into workouts knowing you're going to win or if you're winning every workout, like you're never giving yourself an opportunity to have something to chase. And realistically, like no matter how good your training camp is, you're chasing somebody. There's always a Tia out there or whatever sport your sport is. Like it doesn't matter if you beat the other two people in the gym by 30 seconds, because I can promise you if we could find somebody else in the world that on that workout would beat you by 20 seconds. Right. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I, it's, it's incredibly important and it's incredibly important to, to use that, you know, and, and, and use it as fuel. Don't, don't let it destroy you. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, I think it's easy to be hypercritical. Like it was interesting that you talked about, you know, younger athletes uh, when you're talking about having that mindset, because I can think back to a couple of times where it's just like, I did this wrong. This didn't happen today. You know, this lift didn't go as well as I thought. Um, but there's always, there's always a silver lining. There's always a, you know, two sides to it. There's going to be a positive in there. And, uh, being able to you know sandwich that right, not just load one side of the scale with negative, 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 but just pick one. And so, just highlight one thing that you didn't like, add in that thing you did like, um, and then you know creates a little bit more balance. And then you forget about it. You work with it, and uh, you know don't let it don't let it get you in the next workout. Like we have those different blocks of training, right? And some breaks in between. We have our lifting, we have our metcons, and uh, you know it's important to have different hats. Like I, I, I talk about when I coach, right? I have like a different coaching hat. I have my weightlifting hat. I have my, you know, uh, aerobic capacity hat or whatever it might be. And having that mindset for each specific part of the training, I think is important too. What do the hats look like? Uh, the hats look like <laughs> a little bit of extra brush this way, then a little bit of extra <laughs> brush this way. What color is the uh, aerobic capacity hat compared to the weightlifting hat? He doesn't wear that hat very much. <laughs> Trust me, he doesn't wear it. <laughs> well, apparently, it's it. red because that's the color. That <laughs> that's uh, awesome. Dakota, you had four P's. What's your next P? Yeah, uh, let's see. I'm pulling them back up. We had the program. And uh, yeah, prioritizing, you know day to day, right? I kind of went macro to micro on this one as well. Um, you know, habits, good versus bad lifestyle. So we can start, you know, what are you doing at nighttime, right? Your sleeping habits, um, mm. having a regular, regular schedule with that, waking up and attacking the day. I like to start with something, you know, that's going to put you forward, right? I don't pull out the phone right away, right? Whether for me, it's something programming or something physical. Oh, there's two more piece for you right there. Um, you know, that's how I like Does it. physical really count as a P though? It does. It it's does. a pH. It's still a P, you know. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like a P. Uh, feel. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Jeez. practicing those healthy <laughs> lifestyle habits. But, you know, that's also going with prioritizing, right? Um, you, know, you have to prioritize some time to meal prep or figure out a paleo power meals replacement. 
Um, mm. You have to prioritize. Use code underdogs15 to save. Yeah, you have to prioritize, <laughs> you know, what you're putting in your body, how you're getting ready to fuel for the day and fuel for your sessions. Um, and then the little time blocks that you have in between. You know, for me, a good old nap is going to set me farther forward sometimes uh, when I know that I'm drained out. Um, I love how this keeps coming back to sleep. <laughs> it's what do you true. Know? What do you know about that, Justin? I don't know anything about it, but but I'll tell you, it's uh, it's <laughs> it's the most important thing. I mean, when I read the other day by what did Huberman say? Yep. Andrew Huberman. He said, uh, "Don't ask people how they're feeling. Ask them how they're sleeping." And he said, "and and that'll tell you all you need to know." Um, and that's you know, but <laughs> there's there's another tip. Um, if if you're not doing that, and that ties into everything else, but you know the sleep, um, you know the recovery, the 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 nutrition side of things, um, then you're just making it exponentially harder to achieve the goals that you want to achieve. Um, and we we see that over the years with with specific athletes, you know, who I mean I've worked with athletes in the past who have immense talent and didn't do all those other things and, and, and they had a ceiling that was much lower than, you know, maybe some people that weren't quite as talented as they were, but they were doing everything else that was right. Um, and, uh, and, and we see that all the time. So it's well, very important that it just kind of like umbrellas under this idea of like taking care of the other 23 hours of your day, right. Or 20 hours, however many hours you're spending in the gym, right. Whatever it is outside. But like, I think that people that find a way to be somewhat successful with a shitty schedule don't realize how important it is because they think that they're getting by fine. And I kind of like, I can use Kyra as an example of this because prior to this season or prior to middle of last season, she was still working a few days a week as a dental hygienist. She was up at yeah. five or six, six or she was up at five in the morning, four thirty sometimes so that she could do her mono and then she would go in, she would work all day and then she would come out and she would train at night and she was sleeping seven or less hours a night. She was drinking multiple energy drinks a day. She wasn't eating a ton and, but she was getting by and she made semifinals and she was pretty successful. And so she thought that she was fine with that sort of thing. Fast forward now, after this whole past season of not working as much, being able to devote more time to training, to her nutrition, to sleep, to all of these other things. If she goes like two days where she's off schedule, two days where she had to get up too early, where she didn't get to eat enough, where she had too much caffeine and she was like, on, a, on weird levels, like she notices a huge difference. And so I think it's all a lot of perspective, right? Like, you know, I lived in Boston for a long time and like the lifestyle you didn't, you were in New York, Justin, the lifestyle is like, go, 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 go. And everybody's like, nah, I can, I can operate on this. Like I can stay up all night. I can do this thing. I can work extra hard just because you don't know what it's like to be the other way. And you don't realize how much you're leaving on the table until you actually put yourself in a position to be successful. So this past season, if people, you know, not, I don't know how many people, if, if people listen to some of the podcasts that he did, but when, you know, Ricky and I started working with each other, Ricky was working a full-time job um, and he was laying tile. Uh, and, and every couple of weeks he was, he was breaking down. His body was breaking down. His back would give out. He wasn't sleeping um, because he was waking up ass crack at dawn to do work. And then he was training all day and, you know, so he wasn't getting good sleep. And, and then he was doing manual labor while I was trying to train. And a few weeks before Dubai um, of last season, he was able to quit his job. Um, you know, he, he, he got, uh, he got, uh, sponsorship. Um, luckily I, th I believe it was the first, you know, kind of beginning sponsorship deal that he got with tier. Um, and he was able to quit that job and it was like night and day, you know, all of a sudden his training started to improve. His body started to improve. He wasn't breaking down. And then obviously we know the season that he had, but I'm telling you right now, if he had to work that, that other job and he wasn't able to you know, focus on, on the recovery and sleep, you know, there, there's just no way, you know, there was just no way there are, and it's got to the point now where obviously the, the you know, that, the, the, I'd say what, 95% of the, of the elite athletes are doing it full time and don't have, you know, full time gigs. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're full time athletes. Um, and if, and the other 5%, the majority are doing something else part time. Uh, there's very few that are, that are doing anything else full time. 
um, because it's just too difficult, you know? I mean, it, it's just too hard. You know, you don't see an uh, NBA basketball player or a major leaguer or an NFL, you know, uh, player that, that, that has a side gig, you know, um, coaching classes or, <laughs> you know, working as a nurse or doing something else. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's such a huge part of, of what we do. And, and, and it's, it's also a really hard part because obviously in, in CrossFit, you know, hasn't reached those levels yet as far as being able to make a living. So it's, it's really challenging for those that aren't in the upper, you know, 1% and who have massive followings on social media to get big sponsorship deals. It's really, really hard. Well, and I think that that kind of leads in, you know, assuming we have some non-elite people that are going to listen to this podcast, but it leads into this idea of like uh, finding ways to maximize and optimize your training or optimize your training, not necessarily maximize your training. Because I think there are so many people, there's a lot of people like at Dakota's level, right, who are really good athletes, but they're not at an elite level where they're training full time. They have jobs. Dakota coaches a full time schedule and manages stuff that he's doing at the gym. And we found we had a conversation about this like a couple months ago that like trying to do too much just put him in a position where he wasn't able to get the most out of training pieces or he was missing training pieces and it becomes really hard and really frustrating to figure out what's most important there so being able to pull back doing less but doing each of your pieces as hard as you can for most people will get you way further and for most people it's enough if you have the skill set to get you to a semifinals level Right. Like if you're going to train at the semis, go to the games. Yeah. You need to be doing a little bit more to be prepared for that work. But to get to that point, you don't need more than one hard session that you can really execute on. And I even think at, at you know, uh, at a slightly higher level um, it, with Christine Best, I'll, I'll take, you know, for instance, yeah. and I'm sure she wouldn't mind me. Too. She's a full time teacher. Um, you know, so she's got a full time gig in Long Island. You know, she works at a school, et cetera. Um, but for us, you know, in the past couple of weeks, she said to me, I swear I hear Jackson. I see him. Hear him? I oh, see him peeking through. The ceiling right there. <laughs> there he is. Hi, buddy. Um, in the past couple of weeks, she said to me, hey, um, I'm not, you know, the, uh, my days are just brutal and I'm not being able to, to do my accessory pieces. So what I did was I just combined her conditioning and skill pieces. So it took out a separate monostructural piece and a separate skill piece. And then I was able to combine those and then we were able to fit back in the accessory, which, you know, made her a lot happier and obviously, you know, helped her mentally and physically. So that, that was huge. But I think it's, it's, it's a huge part of being realistic again, of what you're able to accomplish. And that goes back to what you just said with optimizing as opposed to maximizing. Yeah. When you mm -hmm. talked about full-time jobs, I just thought about all my master's athletes. I mean, nearly all of them full-time jobs, you know, Debbie goes in four or 5 a.m comes in, you know, in the afternoon, Shannon, she's a teacher, some of my remote ones, same thing. They work full-time jobs and definitely only have time for one session. And it's how to combine those pieces together. Um, you know, a, maybe we have to cut out one or two things. You can't do a mono and a strength and an only and a this and a that in every single session, but it's easy to combine two or three of those things in one to maximize the time, you know, whether it's supersetting or rest setting or just kind of combining it in a way, um, that the session can flow a little bit quicker without being yeah. in the gym for three hours. I mean, eight hours at a desk job and then zooming over to the gym, you just don't have time for three hours for a single session. And I think that we get, we specifically get spoiled in our situation because we spend all of our time around this crew of elite athletes that are uniquely gifted enough to be able to have the entire day to train. They have three to five hours. They have gyms at home. They can do two sessions. They can do all of these things. And so it becomes really easy to be like, yeah, I can fit, I can do everything. I can try to get better at everything because I have the time and I have the energy and I have the resources for it. And one of the things that I've had to reflect on as a coach, because I've had these conversations recently with some of my athletes, and this is kind of my next big piece is that. Um, when you don't have the luxury of three to five hours to train, you have to be way better at picking one or two things at a time that you're trying to get better at. And that's kind of my big tip to everybody is like, rather than, even if you have, even if you have to get stronger, your skills need development and you're not aerobically fit enough, you have to be able to pick one thing at a time to get better at, or you're not going to get better at any of them because you just don't have the time to devote to all of those things at once. And you have to be able to put some things on the back burner and say like, okay, 
my skills are the biggest limiting factor right now, or my aerobic fitness is the biggest limiting factor right now. And so I'm going to spend 70 or 80% of my time on this. I'll touch on my skills so that they stay where they're at, knowing that, you know, it takes very little effort to maintain your strength and your skills and your things at the level that they're at, but it takes a shit ton of effort to get better at stuff. Right. So if I can just touch on these other things and I can really dive in deep on this one thing that's kind of like my bottom feeder item that's keeping me from whatever next level I'm trying to get to, then you're going to get much better than if you spread your 100%, 30, 30, 30 between all of these things and you're not giving any of them enough time or effort to really get better. That's my fourth P right there. Practice smart. Yes. Yeah. That's two, two, yeah, whatever. That's fine. It works. Well, it's, it's, it started with a P, you know, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, someone sold me uh, pick a skill three times a week, 30 minutes a day for three weeks. Uh, that, that's decent depending on what the skill is, obviously. Um, but yeah, highlighting it multiple times a week, going through it and through the progressions. You don't just go from doing one crossover double to 50 crossover doubles in a row, right? There's mm -hmm. there's a progression. You don't? <laughs> Not most people. <laughs> Not most people. You, know, you don't just go from a V4 to a V9, right? You, you know, there's there's the sure. progress and the progressions between them. Um, yeah. And, you know, let yourself take time through those skills. Build through them. It's okay to, you know, be a master of level one. You know, I don't want to be a master mm -hmm. of level one and then try and dip into level 10. I want to then become a master of level two. Um, and, and for the most part, there's there's enough enough of those to keep you going for an extended amount of time. And then, yeah, like you said, those skills aren't just going to disappear. When you get to the seven or eight or nine and you feel comfortable moving on to the next skill, you know, that's when you incorporate it. You, you know, you can kind of almost phase one out and bring it back occasionally um, to brush up on it. But yeah, taking those weaknesses. It is probably my biggest pet peeve as a coach and individual. And this is like a specific to me because I, um, weightlifting is really my passion within CrossFit too. But my biggest pet peeve is people getting to a higher level or letting themselves get too far into things with terrible technique. And I think specifically for the snatch, seeing people who like just get by and they're okay with just being strong enough or they're constantly trying to push for like 90%, 100% weights in training um, just to be able to snatch, you know, 225, 250, but do it with terrible technique who are incapable or, or uh, unwilling to take the time to step back, refine their technique even if that means that in the short term that you feel terrible snatching and you can't snatch nearly enough because it opens up the opportunity for you to have a higher ceiling later. So this is kind of like your levels thing is like people jumping to this level seven of being a snatch master and trying to max out all the time, not recognizing that trying to jump to level seven without mastering levels one, two, three, and four and understanding your positions and what you're doing is going to keep you from ever getting to level 10. And I think that that's just so hard for people to wrap their head around. I think it's the same with gymnastics and not understanding basic body position and technique. And if you can't kip well and tight, then you're not going to be able to take your three, uh, you know, loose, sloppy looking bar muscle ups to 15 bar muscle ups that are efficient and look really pretty because you just didn't do the things that mattered to get there. I think that that was a, a massive issue back in the day in, in CrossFit, you know, um, I mean, I remember, you know, going to the games in, in 2010 and, you know, I mean, it's very different. Everything looks very different now than it did then. Um, but I but I think in general over the years, you know, for the most part, there were some exceptions to the rule. But for the most part, you saw that those that were excelling were also, you know, tended to be the most efficient. Um, because ultimately the lack of efficiency would just catch up with you, right? Now listen, there are, I could, I could name a few cases now, you know, of all time greats who still don't move really well. You know, technically, they, they're just not extremely technically sound. This please, happened to have- Please tell us. Monster, monster engines and they, and they are just tougher than everybody else. Um, but in general, uh, I think you you see that, that that those that tend to be the best in the world also move the best, um, and and that you know no matter how intense you are, that if you lack efficiency, um, that ultimately that intensity is going to run out because you're just constantly running into a wall of mm -hmm. of inefficiency. So, yes, I I think that that's huge, and I think as coaches, you know. We, we see that all the time um, and it's and you know kind of a coach tip 
to people is is don't allow your athletes to do that. You know, mm. if, if especially at the beginning, if you see something and you see a tendency um, that that is screaming that it needs to be fixed, fix it before you go before that athlete goes too far down the rope, rabbit hole because then it gets harder and harder and harder to fix. And it's it's so it's easy to spot, right? If you well, I'll keep going back to weightlifting like if you have an athlete who says that their max is 180 pounds but you regularly see them struggling or missing lifts at 150 to 170, then there's there's an issue, right? Like there's some sort of efficiency issue, there's something that that's not repeatable for them. And so not not forcing that athlete or not helping that athlete understand why it's important to peel things back, spend time with an empty bar with 95 pounds with 135 with all of these lighter weights until you physically can't do it wrong or until you can hit your 90% weights every single day, um, you're just doing them a disservice. And I think like our background, Kiefer, you and I both played competitive golf and that, that was a huge thing. I mean, right. you, you, you know, growing up, it was very easy, you know, like and, and golf swings it's sometimes like you, you get some bad habits and whatnot but like when i was first starting out obviously that there are there are certain positions that you need to be in there's certain mm -hmm. things that you have to do to be successful that if you break down most golf swings at some point in time the best in the world are in very similar places now not the golf swings may not look the exact same but there are a lot of tendencies that you can say okay that that looks similar or they're doing some of the same things um and you know weightlifting too you look at a lot of different weightlifters and they and and they don't all look the same but they're doing a lot of thing the same things very very well um and 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 when you see people who don't do things well right they they can they can oh we lost kefir um they tend to struggle massively uh, in a lot of the same ways also so um, I think as coaches, you know, starting to recognize those inefficiencies, starting to recognize, um, you know, those issues, uh, and, and then being able to fix it is huge. And, and obviously for athletes like that want to improve, um, you know, that's, that's a massive thing. You can't ignore that. You know, the, if you can become more efficient, it's going to help you in every single way. I feel like it's, it's, a uh, it often, it's, it's not the people at the elite level that I see it with, it's usually the people further from that point that are more afraid to take a step back because they feel like they're so far away already, right? Like if you're at quarterfinals level and you wanted to go to semis, you wanted to go to the games and you struggle in bar muscle ups and you can't, you can maybe get five some days, you're so far away from where other people are at that you're afraid to take a step back mm. and just work on drills and not work on bar muscle ups because you feel like you have to hammer bar muscle ups to get there, right? Right. And Anyway, it, uh, it goes back to kind of one of our big themes of just investing in the process, not being so concerned with the outcome and knowing that showing up, doing the right things will get you there. You just don't see that stuff on the daily basis. Yep. I agree. Did we lose Dakota? No, I'm still here. No, he's there. We lost oh. you. Yeah, we lost yeah, you. Yeah. We did We did lose me. That is that is accurate. <laughs> I, th I thought the whole show was going to go down without me. So proud no, of you guys. Bro. Dakota Came and I, are, we, we held it up. Little did I know, I came back and you were still talking, so I knew we were good. Of course. The <laughs> show must go on, baby. You know what I mean? All right. I got one more. Okay. Let's hear it. What am I, my, probably my biggest tip, and I think this is, uh, this is speaking to myself as much as anything, is, is finding enjoyment outside of the gym. Ooh. I think that CrossFit has a way of breeding like obsessed individuals in such an awesome way, right? Like we, everybody that's doing it and doing it on any competitive level for the most part is like obsessed with what we're doing, mm -hmm. but it becomes so obsessive that your friends are all in the gym. Your time is all in the gym. Your time at home is spent thinking about your food or your training or your recovery or your, your foam rolling or whatever it is. And you start, and for me, it's spending time behind my computer desk if I'm not at the gym. Right. And it's like, you start to uh, eliminate the opportunity to have hobbies and to have other things. And when your whole life is centered around the gym and centered around upcoming competitions and these things, I think that you really limit your ability to be happy. And so my biggest tip to anybody, myself included, is uh, find something else outside of the gym that makes you happy, whether that's crochet or uh, doing puzzles or going rock climbing or playing golf or making commitments to yourself for those things, right? Like I've been trying to get out and play golf more and more myself. And 
I constantly am canceling those appointments with, with Mitch because I'm always like, oh, I got work to do. I got something else. And I'm always pissed and kicking myself after because I was like, I could have carved out two hours. I and have to a, me, uh, some spot yeah. on, on Sunday. We only have three. We this Sunday? Work. Yeah. Uh, I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Maybe, maybe I got to play. I might have to play with Miss though. But, but, but that's my point. Is like there are always going to be other things to fill your time unless you put it in your calendar and make it a priority or make an appointment with yourself for those things. And so that's my. Uh, if I were to carve out a resolution for myself, that's my one big resolution is to schedule time for me, both like with my family as well as you know for myself outside of the gym because. I spent a good part of the 2022. Um, if I were to reflect back, I don't know that I could come up with like many key moments that didn't happen in a gym, and that's not okay with me. Yeah, I think that's I think that's great. I think I think that's hard for the for the for the super high level like elite athletes to mm -hmm. to like comprehend. Um, especially if you, you know, if you look at like the Matt Frazier's of the world that yeah. just were so incredibly obsessive about, you know, then that's all they did, you know, all the time. But, but it's not necessary. It doesn't necessarily it, have to be that. You yeah. Know? And it's not for them, right? Like I'm not talking to the, to the 1% sure. of the 1% of the 1%. Absolutely. Um, you even hear games out. You hear guys like Noah Olson talking about, how, you know, he's a better athlete when he has more happiness about things going on outside the gym, right? Like, yeah. I don't mean balance in terms of 50-50, like half your time is this, half yeah. your time is that. Like balance can be, I'm fucking obsessed, but I have this 2% of my life that's important here and that balances right. me out. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it's super important, especially for the people that aren't games athletes who are still crazy obsessed with CrossFit, right? It's like, you know, find find something else too. You know, yeah. it, it is incredibly important. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think that's great. I think it's a great, that's a great tip, Kiefer. Love it. Is that your uh, 2023 resolution? More hobbies? Uh, yeah, my, my, my resolutions for the year probably are more hobbies. Um, it's saying yes, less. I could do like a whole personal episode on this topic. Uh, and then uh, less energy drinks. Well, that, that, that has to happen. Or you may not yeah. live to see 2024. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey I've, got a, I've got a seltzer right now. I'm doing better. There you go. Good. Excellent. What's your... Give, give, me, give me one or two resolutions, Takata. Uh, 2022 was get outside more and take more pictures. And thank mm -hmm. goodness for Vinny. You know, there you go. Uh, he wouldn't know because I don't post as many of his, as he takes, but they're there. Um, 2023, 2023, I just want to get better at planning. You know, I, honestly, there was, there was about one, one month where I did like a daily calendar. Um, and I think I, I, I went overzealous. I was like every 15 minutes, right? I, I tried to plan every piece of my day out, um, mm -hmm. when I was going to eat, when I was going to train, when I was going to do my sleeping. Right. Um, and I think I want to plan, but just on a one thing per day, right? Like a single goal per day. Um, you, uh, you tried to jump to your 514 before you hit a 512. That was it. Yep. Yeah, that's what it was. There you go. Rookie uh, mistake. But, you know, I already have a new, uh, one of those big paper calendars that you can rip off from your desk every single, every single month. Nice. So I have one of those. Mm -hmm. And just gonna fill it with one box or one item every day instead of like six little bullet points of things I have to do and just get overstressed with it. Um, you know, I want to be able to be successful in my resolutions, and so I think just one thing like that is is gonna be something I can actually accomplish without being overwhelmed. Well, and you're you're guaranteeing yourself an opportunity to actually cross something off your list each day, right? And it's I think people get afraid to put like have just one goal because they think that's the only thing they're going to do, but usually that's just a gateway to so many other things. If you're like, "All right, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I'm going to 
I, this is not mine because I loathe this, but uh, it, I'm going to make my bed every day, right? And you're like, that's a silly, stupid little habit. It takes two minutes or whatever. But checking that box usually leads to people doing a couple other things in the day that are productive going forward. Now, I will never be that person because it doesn't make sense to me to make something <laughs> that I'm going to destroy when I go to bed at night. But but the idea of that, right, is like what's your, uh, your feeder habit, your domino habit into other things? Yeah, and I would say like my biggest tip for anyone that – they're going to try and be that person where they're planning or making a goal for the day. If you really do get up and do that one of the first things in the day or as early as possible, then you have a whole day of basically opportunity, right? If you can check that box off by noon, you have potentially eight hours of other things that you can do that are just bonuses. Um, so getting that versus waiting till 8 p.m. and you haven't done that yet, now you're stressed out about it. You might not have time. You might have to sacrifice other things. Verse, if you can just get that thing done early, you got the whole day. Which for most people is going to the gym, right? Like the, there is no doubt in my mind that the people that go to their CrossFit gym in the morning before work are like more successful and more kind of like driven by what they're doing in the gym than the people that come in the evening, which is not to say people aren't successful in the evening, but they are like markedly different individuals and mindsets, right? Like you're a little bit more determined, you're up. You're, you like cross that first thing off your box. You're moving through the day. The people come in in the evening. It's like, you can see that their soul's been fucking sucked from them. <laughs> right? Like, and, and, and you rarely have those dedicated morning people be the ones that are like, ah, oh, I couldn't make it to the gym today. Something came up, had a work meeting. Like, Jim, nobody has a work meeting at 6.30 in the morning unless you're uh, working on different time zones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But. I like it. I what's your resolution, Justin? I, uh, making my, um, get, getting much more, um, serious about my fitness and health. Um, it's been a while. It's hard with kids and business and coaching and it's been, it's been a while. I mean, I, I would say pr like since prior to the pandemic, you know, really like getting in a consistent schedule of, of, of training. Um, and for me, that just means training for life. Like I'm not, you know, I want to do things that feel good. Um, but I want to do them consistently. Um, you know, and, and so, you know, that could mean for me, like I said, I'm going to do my, you know, two days of, of, of rock climbing, but beyond that, you know, we, we just got our home gym. We're putting that together here and, you know, that helps me because it's very hard for me to train at the gym. I uh, just always feel distracted. Uh, so being able to get, you know, 30 to 30 minutes to 45 minutes when the kids go to school, get it done in the morning and, and um, you know, get it done five, six days a week and, and just get consistent. Um, I just think that'll that'll be a huge uh, benefit and bonus for, for not just my physical health, but my mental health, too, because I, I certainly don't feel you know, right, right now, the, the way that I would, you know, like to, um, just in, in general. And I think, um, I can certainly improve that. So that's going to be, um, you know, it's going to be a, a big, uh, big goal for me this year. Just got to schedule it in. I know. Make the appointment with yourself. Tell your wife, say I'm busy at this hour. Sorry. Oh uh, yeah. Good luck. You know, my wife. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, Never heard of her. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All right, that friends. Note. On that note, <laughs> wrap up another episode, probably our last episode for 2022. So uh, thank you all for listening. Like, subscribe, share with a friend, do all the things we're supposed to tell you to do at the end of a podcast. Give us feedback, especially to Dakota. Now that he has this new mic, make sure you let him know that you love it. We're working we all on have the backdrop the, next. We'll get the backdrop. We all have the, we have the exact same mic. What a team. You know that we all have the the, the uh, blue Yeti in black. You could set us all up on one panel; it would look good. I'm gonna get the, the glasses, the prescripts. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, get the big gaming. Get some headphones. headphones. Yep. I would. Yep. I have gaming headphones. I just didn't know that that was a thing. I thought we were trying to like be sleek and you know with the buzz. Nice. I, I asked uh, a trusted advisor who does podcasts and knows people that do, does do podcasts, and they told me to get these headphones. They were fairly cheap, and they work well. Uh, supposedly, over the years, just better at kind of like drowning out other noise for you personally. I think. They're excellent. They're I excellent, Keith. They seem a good great. suggestion. Yes. Thank you. I'm full of good suggestions. Bye, everybody.